Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with blogtoread.com. Don't forget to like this video if you find it useful. This is the Lind Verdelin Spido Speed Chronograph based upon the Spido Light. This is the this is the brand's first chronograph and takes into account the skeletonized case concept that the Spido Light introduced and there is a Spido Light 2 coming out very very soon. This is probably one of Linda Verland's most interesting and cool creations. Um, they spent their, I don't know, they spent a while before they wanted to release a chronograph. People have been asking them, let's see a chronograph, let's see a chronograph. And they finally did. And this watch comes in a couple versions. This is the um, sandblasted steel. There's a DLC coated steel and there's a DLC in rose gold uh, version as well. Uh, it looks like titanium, doesn't it? Uh, it doesn't feel like titanium. It is a heavy watch, but it looks an awful lot like titanium. And if memory serves me properly, the Spido Light was in titanium. So I'm going to guess that for the next series of the chronograph, there are going to be titanium models. Um, but as a steel watch, it isn't, it isn't crazy heavy. Now, the way the case is constructed is interesting. As you see there, there's like um, a barrel. And that inner barrel is where the movement is. And then there's this frame that goes around there uh, that sort of has the the other side, you know, the lugs and the side part of the case. Now the case is this design. <coughs> All Lynn Verlin watches are this design because they are meant to take on their sort of instruments. They have these computers. So every single Lynn Verlin watch you're going to see, at least for the foreseeable future, is going to have the same case design. And it's a good case design. It's done well. It looks attractive off the wrist. It looks attractive on the wrist. And it's, and it's cool. Now what movement is this? This is a Concepto movement. That's by the Jacquet family. I don't remember the exact specific reference, but it's done very well. It's a very sexy looking movement. There's a custom Linda Verdelin rotor on there. I, I just like it. This is different polishes, different colors. It's a pretty sexy looking movement. I, I, I'm overall pretty happy with it. Um, there's no date here. I don't know why there's no date. There should be a date. There's no date, but oh well. Reading the chronograph is very simple. Interestingly enough, this is one of Linda Verdelin's most legible timepieces, and it's a chronograph, which is funny. The chronograph itself is easy to read. Uh, the hands are easy to read. I like it a lot. And they did a good job by having this sort of like dark gray metal for the case, and then the dial being black, and then the hands being lighter. Now, the strap on this model is um, its like a textile strap. I don't really know how else to describe it. It's fabric. But it's cool. These guys always do really, really cool straps. And there it is on the wrist. That's a, that's a swanky looking timepiece. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, a friend of mine was looking at me wearing this thing and he was like telling me it looks like this like commando watch and some guys on a stealth night mission wearing this. I, that's great if he sees that. I, <laughs> I don't know about that, but I think it is a very cool looking sporty timepiece. And the overall design of all the Linda Verdelin timepieces looks great on the wrist. I think they've done a very good job um, by doing that. Um, there's not a ton of luminant on the dial, but it is there and there's enough of it. And what's interesting is that it's, it's on the harder end to see the luminant on the hour markers, but it is there um, in the dark. It, it, does, it does show up. And there's luminant on the chronograph hands as well, which I definitely like. Now, one thing here that's been a source of controversy has been the chronograph pushers. Now, if you look at the original designs of the Spido Speed chronograph, they did not have the protruding type of chronographs that had these little um, piston style things. It was just sort of that cool flat underneath piece. The problem was is when they finished the watch, they realized the chronograph pushers were too hard to push and they needed to extend them a little bit. I would have liked for them to just continue that same shape out rather than put on these little nubs. But they put on these little nubs so that you can push, you could operate the chronograph pushers. I have a feeling they're going to sort of modify that in the future because I think it was a really cool thing to have the, the pushers as they wanted to have it. Um, and this is sort of a utilitarian fix to make it work, work as well. So I think it's interesting if you look at the original designs uh, as well as what they finally came up with to see sort of the evolution of this piece. Price for the Linda Verdelin Spido Speed Chronograph is. Their pricing is a little weird. It's about 12,000 euros, um, and that goes up to, well, it's, it's just under 12,000 euros for this version. It's steel. If it's DLC, it's about 
12,300, 400 euros. And then with the DLC steel in rose gold, it is like 15,300, 400, something like that, um, euros for that model. So these are expensive watches, but they're, they're very limited. Each, mo each of these models is limited to just 100 pieces for the, what they call the A series which means that that's all they're going to make for the first run and then when they make them a second time it's possible they make changes, different colors, things like that. So assume that it's safe to say that this particular watch will only be a hundred of them ever made. Same thing as well as the DLC version and the, and the DLC and gold version and then moving forward uh, it's not clear exactly how Linda Verlin will change it. Again, Linda Verlin, Spider Speed Chronograph. You can see the full review on ablogtoread.com and please subscribe to Ablog to Read videos on YouTube. Thanks.